All right, guys, got a quick video here on how to replace your radiator. Um, this is a 91 Vanagon two-wheel drive. Um, pretty much just dropping in a new new radiator today. My uh, my cooling or my coolant is all pretty new, so I'm gonna try to isolate just the radiator system by by clamping off the lines and uh, minimize the amount of bleeding I have to do. Get rid of your spare tire. Um, it's probably easiest if you just take the pan off. Um, someone actually welded the little pins on mine permanently permanently attached. So mine's pretty difficult to remove. So I'm gonna try to just leave it in. But uh, if you can just pull it out, it's probably easier. There's little clips usually that allow you to just pull the whole pan off. Um, go ahead and disconnect your battery. Since you're gonna be opening up the, the radiator fan, it's got power to it. And then pull off both both grills, lower end, upper, just some some um, some screws and. All right. So once you get your grills off, unplug your fan switch right here. Um, you're gonna need to swap this guy over onto the new radiator. So make sure you get that piece. Um, don't damage it. Um, so the way these things basically sit in here is these little pins. Um, just ram up in through this hole, and then there's two brackets um, here and also here. So basically, you just pull this bracket, and then it'll start to slide out. Um, this van originally had air conditioning, so it's got a condenser mounted on the front of the the radiator. My um, AC system does not work, so these are empty. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull these fittings off and uh, just slide out the whole assembly. The radiator fan wires, you will need to disconnect those from the back of the fan to get it out. Um, the wires are not long enough. But yeah, so you just sort of start lowering this assembly down. Watch out, it's pretty heavy, especially with coolant in it. Um, and uh, yeah, just watch hoses and stuff. Watch out, um, that elbow on the heater line kind of got snagged on my shroud so watch out for that all right so i got it out i sort of set it on this little stool which is working pretty well um now i'm gonna go ahead and drain the coolant out of it um what i'm gonna try to do is clamp off these hoses um right here at the radiator and that way basically i'm only gonna drain the coolant that's in the radiator and then i'll fill it through the bleeder screw i've got the the hose is all clamped off. I use some like big rubber vice grip clamps. That worked pretty well. I had to do two on each hose to get it to stop leaking. Um, but now you pretty much just swap everything over to the new radiator. So pull off the shrimp fan shroud and don't forget that um, switch, the fan switch, which is uh, it's located on the other side. That needs to get installed on the new one. Um, you'll put the condenser onto the new one. I'm actually going to leave my condenser off. Um, like I said, my air conditioning doesn't work and this condenser is actually broken anyway. So I'm just going to leave it out until I uh, decide to do AC one day. Once you get everything all switched over, um, I got new little rubber washers um, for these, these studs. They're meant to have them um, originally. My radiator, for whatever reason, didn't have them, or maybe they just disintegrated over the years. But, um, yeah, those just slide on right there. All right, so to install this thing, you might need an extra hand. I needed an extra hand. Um, just because it's pretty heavy. But you'll basically slide it in from the bottom, and then if you can have someone to help guide, um, guide these pins up into place, it's very helpful. While the other person is down here underneath, um, securing these brackets. Mine looks a little more empty without the condenser on, but it's in there and it's solid. Um, and then once you get it in there, just tighten it down a little bit and then, uh, go ahead and install your radiator fan wires. Plug your radiator fan switch back in. So I've rigged up this funnel contraption. Um, just a bunch of reducer hoses that comes down to this little tiny hose that inserts into the bleeder screw. Um, this is a pretty effective way to fill the radiator. So what I just did was I filled, 
filled it up until it started coming out the hole. And then I opened up my clamps. The water went down a good amount as those bubbles came up. And then I basically filled it up again. Now what I'll do is I'll put the radiator screw back in, go ahead and fire it up, let it circulate for a while, get warmed up. And then once it gets up to temperature, I have a Subaru, which means the, the thermostat opens at 196 degrees. So wait till it gets to about there and then crack the bleeder screw and pop any, any remaining air out. Basically isolated just the front end of the cooling system. Bleed that bit of it out and we should be good to go. So it's important while you're letting it circulate that your heater valve is open. So it's that second one down and he's belly to the right. And then I'm just monitoring my temp here on the cob. Um, basically it's going to keep an eye on that number to make sure nothing's getting too hot the other thing to look for is um, if you have good flow this this plastic piece should start getting pretty hot like this is already very hot um, that indicates you have obviously good flow coming through it's coming out clean no bubbles anymore so I think we're pretty much there I'm gonna let it just circulate through and take it for a little drive with the grill off bleed as necessary but pretty much done